Good morning to all of you. We're so glad that you're present for worship this morning, adding some beauty to the Texas intensity. Uh, we've got several announcements for you this morning as we prepare to move into worship. I know that um, Chris Palmer is shifting from breakfast to worship, so he'll join us in just a minute. But we want to note among the many announcements in your bulletin that we've got ice cream social scheduled for September 9th. And there may be a little contest going on for homemade ice cream. I'll be bringing my key lime pie and Jamie Boss is gonna be bringing a salted caramel. So please let us know about your flavors and um, as they say, bring it so that we can enjoy the food and celebrate um, a little bit of a contest on favorite flavors. A little bit later in the service, we'll be celebrating new members. And just a nod to the music team this morning that's worked really diligently so that you and I can enjoy a new beginning Sunday. The breakfast downstairs was so well attended, not an empty seat, and uh, we're grateful for everything that is waiting for us in this new academic year for children, youth, and adults. We also appreciate that folks have brought their backpacks and there'll be an opportunity to bless those in the service. So for now, let's um, settle in around some prayer concerns. We want to be remembering John Baker, who has received serious diagnosis and is undergoing continued appointments. We want to be remembering also Jan Bodine, who um, was hospitalized all last week and is in a rehabilitation center prayers for her and for all of her friends who are making that transition possible. Prayers for our clerk, Ken Coons, who is facing surgery and uh, medical uh, procedures. We want to be remembering also um, the Stern family. Charlie uh, lost his mom, Kathy Stern, this last week. Charlie, our love and prayers are with you and also the way that Sharon's been taking care of her mom, Jimmy Joe. There's just so many things that bring us into the intensity of this space. And I trust the way you've carried those you love, those you're celebrating, to be with us in worship. We pour the baptismal water to remember the strength of a baptism that buoys us up. And we welcome one another by saying, welcome home, children of God.
Friends, would you rise in body or in spirit as we call ourselves to worship? Come in. Come all the way into the presence of self, others, and God. We bring with us our triumphs, regrets, certainties, and quandaries. So come in. Come all the way into the presence of self, others, and God. We bring with us our intent to open up, reach out, and travel forward. So let us worship the God who transfigures past and present toward a healing future. Amen.
Beautiful. You may be seated. Each week, wherever we are, we engage the discipline of confession. Perhaps it runs through your own mind and heart all week long, thinking again, turning over in our minds those experiences that we feel are transgressions or sins, things for which we are sorry. Let's offer a prayer of confession and aspiration with one voice wherever we are. God of relationship and grace, we confess seeing so many fences that need mending in our lives. Breaches of confidence and over-functioning requires a reset for the heart and mind. Neglect of one restores relationship that tempts us to sidestep and simply begin building with someone else. May we find the grace within to restore strength to one another in each new moment of our living. These things we pray as we consider the Creator's privilege to make all things new. Amen. So many times we declare that the cup of our living is full, filled to the brim and overflowing with God's good gifts of love and grace, redemption. Let's take a minute to extend the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with each of you. Peace of Christ. Lovely. Let's continue greeting one another. We want to sing our children forward and to invite uh, four mothers, Mallory Montoya, Teresa Jingles, uh, Regina Kirioka, and Lauren Oliveras. Oh my gosh, What's great up, backpacks. Thank you, Theo. We'll put them right up yeah, here. Yeah, if you got a backpack, here, we'll take them. Thank you. Oh, take them. We'll take them. Adorable. Yeah, thanks, Finley. Anna, you want to give me yours? Is it so heavy? No, it's great. Oh, Amazing. what a good looking group. Holy moly. Um, before we start, would you guys help me welcome two new members? Actually, we have four. So we need to look at the Zoom camera and Wade, because Juanita Dabowski and Helen Harris are new members who are Zooming in today. 
So can you say, uh, welcome Helen and Juanita? One, two, three. One, two, three. Welcome, welcome Helen, Helen and, and Juanita. Juanita. <laughs> and then in the sanctuary room, we have two new members from our choir, Sarah Davis and John Jovicic. Yeah. And want to want you guys to come and have your bread. Come on out. John has been our music man. Many of you know John. And Sarah is a Presbyterian who is kind of like remote from your home, but with us now. And we really want to give bread, acknowledging the strength that we draw from Christ's table together and celebrating your membership among us. Now it's your turn. Welcome, John and Sarah. One, two, three. Welcome, John and Sarah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Now, we have a spirit box, Leslie. Although I'm gonna have to ask Chuck to move really quick so I can get it out here. Ooh. All right, y'all. So this spirit box today comes to us from a really special family. I think he's still in the back. Do you wanna join us? So this spirit box comes from Mac Jingles. You're closing out your August series with adults. We are. Yeah. We have one more next week. We're extending August by a week into September. Okay, excuse me guys. I'm gonna go all the way down here. All right, Mr. Mac, we've got three things in this spirit box, okay? First, what is that? All right, Looks who like knows? Looks like what? Rival state. A rival state. <laughs> oh, this is like warfare in Texas. Oh, Bob Lott's about to, yeah, he's about to stand up. And what does LSU stand for? Someone take a guess. Oh, it's, it is the Tigers. Yeah, <laughs> Teresa's <laughs> proud. Jacob, what does LSU stand for? Louisiana State University. All right, I heard a Joe Burrow came from Louisiana State University. Very good. He's your fantasy quarterback, Greg? Okay, we're hoping. And we've got something else here. Here, Leslie, can we get that microphone for Mac? What do you guys think this is? Your dad makes a lot of these. He's an artist. Mac, here's wireless number two. Mac, can you tell us? This is so special, and I know you put... It's more, there's more than meets the eye there, because I know there's something special about the medium. Do you want to tell us about it? Sure. Uh, right, so this is a uh, fishing line. So I, I draw with fishing line on top of a, an abstract ground, and there's a bird there. And then uh, if you're familiar with the Marx Brothers, that's, that's one of them, and he's holding on to a beam, and he's being swept away by a river. And he's being swept away by a river. Yeah, but he's taking it well. So they're. <laughs> but he's taking it well. Can you imagine that, guys? So Mac is an artist, and he's not just an artist, he's an art professor. He teaches at Baylor in the art department. Okay, isn't that so cool? Look, he did that with fishing line. Look at all the details. That's fishing, isn't that crazy? Amazing. All right. All right. Leslie, can you hold that? Because yeah, I know I'd it's really. And I'll hold the hat too. Yeah? Okay. And this is a really wonderful one. So, yeah, this is a, a picture of Teresa and I, and uh, it's seven years, seven years ago, eight, eight years, years ago, ago in uh, Port A. Um, this is when they had you, Hannah? Yeah, so that's what she told me we were having our first, and uh, when I came out of the restroom, Teresa gave the camera to the table next to us, unbeknownst to me, and that, so that's the day everything changed. This is the day, can you guys see this? I know it's kind of a small photo, so I'm gonna walk it out here a little bit. Did you wash your hands? How lovely is that? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The day that the game changed. The game, the day the game yeah. changed. Y'all, the, the Jingles family is, they're such a, a special family to this congregation, uh, and they are near and dear to so many of us. Um, the thing I love, I'm going to try and put my glasses up here so they're falling down my face. Um, the thing I love about Mac 
is that as an artist, Max sees the world in such a new and inviting and different way. And all of that goes into his artwork is this unique perspective that he brings to the world, a perspective that nobody else has, not a single one of us. Just like when we have children, we're bringing someone new into the world, someone who is irreplaceable and who no one could ever replicate as hard as they tried. And so one of the things that I think that the Jingles family, and Mac in particular, teaches me daily is to not be afraid of the uniqueness that each of us brings to the table. That the, Psalms, the psalmist says that God knit us together before we were even a thought, a wish, or a hope. And so today, as you guys go out, maybe into school, take your uniqueness with you. And don't be afraid of it. Let it shine. Because God gave it to you and you alone. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Can we stand up and say our prayer together? All right, ready? God be in my head. God be in my heart. God be on my left. God be on my right. God be beneath me. God be above me. God be in the faces of all who love me. Amen. You guys can go with Miss Emily Stottlemyre, Children's Church. Want to invite the moms to stay, and we'll hand that microphone off to you guys. You can speak from the pulpit. Either way, you may. This is my way. Uh, good morning, everyone. So Gina couldn't be here this morning, but she would, is also a part of this. Um, we've been thinking a lot about Christian formation and what it means for children and our families and other families in our congregation. And so we want to share with you um, our new Christian formation experience that the four of us will be co-facilitating. Can you hear? Oh, no, I can hear myself. Oh, no, no, it's not going. Okay. Okay. Um, we have gotten together and decided that we want to do a Sunday school class where it is open to families to come with parents to come with their children. Um, if you want to, you can also drop your kids off. We're kind of envisioning this to be a kind of we're hoping it's an intergenerational class. So the way we're setting it up for one of the four of us to be a primary guide each Sunday. And then we would love to have anybody sign up to help on any given Sunday. You can sign up for as many Sundays. You can sign up for as many Sundays as you want. Or you can sign up for a single Sunday and say, okay, well, I tried it, not for me. Um, but everybody, everybody has something that you unique that they can bring into the life of a child, and there's something really special about that. So got it. I'll take this, and this is why we're going to share it because we're all um, we're all working moms, and we all have a lot of things that are on our plate. So it takes a lot of us to shoulder this. And I didn't say that this morning, but to state the obvious. It's taking at least the four guides and hopefully a lot of you guys to help volunteer to take the one Mallory. Um, so as she has taken on a role as a full-time teacher, that now we're sharing that um, as the part-time position is you know, being searched and then hopefully filled soon. So we hope that you guys will ask us questions if you're wondering what this looks like. There's not a ton of programming that we're planning. We want this to be a fun Sunday. We don't want um, another point where you have to come and sit and, and have to be structured like you do all week. We want this to be fun. We want the scripture to kind of come off the pages and have the kids to have stories that they can rely on. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask one of us or one of the pastors. We'll be out in the atrium afterwards. They're the sign-up sheets. So if you have any questions at all, or if you just say, look, I'm here, if you want to throw me on a date, we would love to do that as well. So we look forward to working with you and kind of sharing this with you.
Thank you so much. Join me in a word of prayer as we prepare to approach uh, scripture from the book of Genesis. Let us pray. Gracious God of life and light, we seek to be illumined by the experiences of our life, by the musings in our mind, the neighbors to our right and left, and most deeply by your word. These things we pray as we beseech your Holy Spirit in and around us. Amen. A reading from Genesis 45, 1 through 20. Uh, grant me a little bit of grace as I skip through some of the verses. It was rather long reading, but it's a really strong one. When Joseph could no longer control himself before all who stood by him, and he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And Joseph wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers couldn't answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into slavery into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine's been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it wasn't you who sent me here, but God. God has made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all his house and a ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God made me lord over all of Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near Joseph, and you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks. I'll provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come. It was then that Joseph wept upon the neck of his brother Benjamin. Pharaoh heard the news, and Pharaoh promised, too, to Joseph's household that they would have the best of the land of Egypt. And so it was that Joseph's household was not to worry about his greatness any longer. This is the word of the Lord.
Friends, would you rise in body or in spirit as we read from the gospel this morning? Taken to us from St. Luke's account, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Hear these words. And now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James. And they went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. And his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking with him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. And now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory. And the two men who stood with him saw it as well. And just as they were leaving, Peter turned and said to Jesus, Well, Master, is it good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed all of them, and they were terrified as they entered into that cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent. And in these days told no one any of the things that they had seen. That's the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thanks, you may be seated. Transfiguration is dazzling. Transfiguring is something altogether different. Transfiguration, a hindsight image a narrative within our gospel to communicate identity fully realized in Christ is dazzling. Transfiguring is rough, challenging, and requires all our courage, and yet, When we are dazzled by a narrative within scripture, let us make no mistake. We are not called to be mere observers, but to say to ourselves something like this. Go figure. Go figure on the dazzling. Seeing something extraordinary brings the question to the human mind, what role do I play in this? Transfiguring, go figuring, is one of the greatest privileges that there is as a human being. In the presence of God, with the help of the Spirit, to go figure, to participate in transfiguring, our circumstances is one of our great privileges. We believe, instructed by Luke 9, that Christ goes before us in this way. The narrative pulls him into the company of Moses and Elijah and then sends him down the hill into some of the most intense sufferings of the ancient world. Go figure. Why transfigure? 
Joseph, for his part, is involved in this figuring process, has been involved in it maybe since being in the pit that his brothers threw him into, rising in and around power in Egypt to deploy a feeding strategy, a method for deploying surplus. Go figure. Transfigure. This uh, space, this building, this heft that we have, and if you say, what does she mean by heft? Just know that stewardship season is coming. You'll feel that soon enough. This beautiful building was not always with the stained glass, was not always with the polished floor and the myriad of hallways. This building, this heft, started about the time that the Civil War was raging. Three organizing pastors settle into this part of Texas and call for the Presbytery to establish a congregation of some 17 people. And the individual who serves the congregation, the first Samuel King, whose beard was longer than my hair, was an itinerant preacher, a mover, among various congregations. And only after the adventure and the ruggedness of starting things up does that pastor settle into a presence here. Overall, he will serve some 40 years. Go figure. That a place of such tradition with such length of life began off the energy of an itinerant preacher. <laughs> Go figure the itinerancy of Moses and Elijah. Go figure through wilderness, through a landscape that needed a prophetic voice. Luke 9 has Jesus figuring with two dudes that did a lot of wandering. What is life in this temporary home of our bodies, if not the intent to hold, build a space? We own our homes. We deploy our energy into businesses in which if we don't have a share, we've got sweat equity. Go figure. It is good for us to be here. Let's build something up right here, right here. Let's hold on to it. New beginnings every August in this church. It runs on the academic year, but it runs with a different kind of energy, a kind of energy that says we are not just holding ground as a community of faith, we are becoming something new, and we're about to figure together. Now, let me say that my job security is very tied up in worship, but I've got to tell you about the hours in between 8.30 and 10.30. Because here you are, and you've done the most extraordinary thing. You've settled yourself down to be listeners. And you've settled yourself in to be observers of a litany that you abide by. You abide by it. But in the hours in between 8.30 and 10.30, that is my only shot, our only shot, to really hear to really hear what has gone on with you and God in the weekday moments of your living. Well, it's not the only. But it is the small group organized way that various voices can make contribution to content, can talk back to established theology and doctrine, can problematize assertions, in a way that deeply enriches all of our own lives. For each of you, in your own way, have in fact been fundamentally itinerant and you bring that 
itinerant energy, that wandering energy, that energy that holds the power to be prophetic to this place. I believe God fills you with it. And so this precious hour of time, you know, how much time is she going to ask for after all? This precious hour of time is an hour to go figure. Transfiguring together. Joseph, the narrative of Joseph, don't worry, brothers, you didn't do it. God did it. Don't worry, brothers, you didn't do it. God did it. Don't worry, brothers, a third time, you didn't do it. God did it. Except the brothers most certainly did do it. And God most certainly did do it. But Joseph transfigures it. The narrative would not have worked at all if one of the brothers stepped forward and said, Oh, Joseph, it's great to see you. It's a miracle what God has done in your life. We don't get to transfigure other people's circumstances. But Joseph transfigures the suffering, the uncertainty of his circumstances and interprets it towards meaning and purpose that is appropriate. He doesn't pretend, doesn't say he didn't suffer, doesn't say it wasn't hard, but he deals with his past gently. I think Luke 9 shows Christ dealing with his past gently. Now, I don't know about you, but I can take a bullwhip over my past pretty quick. Moments where I feel like I've been less than intelligent, less than kind, less than responsive. Transfiguring requires a loving attention to the past, pulling it forward to the moment, good golly, that we want to hold on to. And then slipping through the present moment towards the emerging needs around us. Go figure. Go transfigure. There is something powerful that happens when itinerancy declares purpose and then feeds with abundance the multitudes. There is no space but the human heart that can hold that. There is no space but the human mind that can treasure it. There is no home expect, except the space between you and I as we transfigure past, present, respond to the future. This sermon, ser this sermon concludes a series on the origin stories of our lives. And Joseph's reunification with his brother, brothers, is the perennial story of us being reunited to our past for the sake of the real and pending demands of our future. Transfiguration is dazzling, but transfiguring is illuminating. And you don't get to be an observer. Amen. Let's um, stand up and affirm our faith. We use the Apostles' Creed this week. It's on page 35 of your hymnal, if that's helpful. Let's find our shared voice. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Friends, you may be seated. Thank you. Having heard the word proclaimed, we now invite our gratitude and our generosity. I'll invite the ushers to come forward to receive our offerings. Friends, all of you may be seated, please. That was a weird way to say that. <laughs> uh, we have, as you can tell, a bunch of bags up here. Um, and the start of the school year, and for some people, it might ignite terror. For some people, it's a time of excitement and of joy. But we want to invite, knowing that many, many of you are involved, either as teachers or as learners and as students, I want to invite you, if this is a new school year, to stand up, to stand in body or in spirit, please. 
if this is a new school year, and it doesn't matter if you're a teacher, an administrator, a student, anyone. DJ, you can stand up too. Come on. So I have a friend, uh, he's from Nigeria, and what he says is that whenever they're in worship together, that prayer is not just something that they do with their heads or with their mouths, but he says that they do it with their bodies. And so what I want us to do today is as we bless our year, and as we bless these backpacks, is I'm going to invite you, this is where we get really vulnerable, into a response. And so every time that I say the phrase, Lord, hear us, what I want you to do is stomp and clap. Can you do that? Can we practice? Can we? There's like, you guys are looking scared. Ready? Lord, hear us. I love that. Make it as loud as possible, okay? Let's bless this year together. Would you pray with me? O God of the far and the wide, O God of the deep, the near, O God of everything that we have achieved and of everything that we fear that we can't achieve, Lord, hear us. God, we ask your blessing and your provision on this new beginning in our lives whether this be our first year at school, or maybe this is our 50th year at school, God, we ask that something new might await us, something better than we could ever imagine. Lord, hear us. God, for you are the one who calls us from darkness into light. And so we ask that you would give us a keen understanding, that you would give us a retentive memory, that you would give us the ability to grasp things fundamentally and correctly. But even more than that, we ask that you would give us the spirit of inquiry and of generosity. Lord, hear us. God, we ask that even in the moments of difficulty, in the moments that feel like obstacles that we need to overcome, we ask for your courage to put one foot in front of the other to go into unexpected places, even the places that we fear the most, and yet trusting that there's no place that you will leave us alone or forsaken. Lord, hear us. God, we ask that in all things that you would point us to your beginning, that you would direct our progress, and then you would bring it to completion in yourself. Lord, hear us. And now tethering these, our prayers, to the one that your son first taught us to pray, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are hereby blessed. Amen. You may be seated.
friends, just to note that you are all graciously invited to linger after worship and to get some goodies out here in the foundation parlor. Uh, our thanks to the Dupuy family for hosting. Go out into the world in peace, be people of hope, people of courage. Render no one evil for evil, but in all ways and at all times, defend those who feel helpless. Lift up those who life has brought low. Bring closer those who feel marginalized and outcast. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing forever in the power of the Holy Spirit. Any of it, maybe all of it is possible for you and for me because we're enveloped by our creator, redeemer, sustainer, and friend. Amen.